You know, it was Jerry saying that he's been taking the high road for a long time, but he about to tell his piece. This was the high road that you've been taking? After that sorry ass live, the only road you need to be taking is the road that leads you to Mattress Johnny. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, only at Mattress Giant. Ooh, ah, only at Mattress Giant. Ooh, ah, cause I know your bed is still on the motherfucking floor. Is this where the magic happens? It is. <laughs> Let's pause. Let's pause right here. You see, this right here is where Ayana fucked up at. Jerry. When you invited them two women over to your apartment, was your mattress still on the floor? During black women's, I'm not one of your little friends. During black women, do you have McDonald's money? Black mama money. this Ayana and Jared stuff child I was traveling over the weekend uh I got stuck in LA because I had delays and then my, my flight got canceled then a bitch had to go to Tennessee to Nashville to figure out a way to come here to Atlanta it just was a mess um so y'all I'm I'm honestly exhausted like I'm exhausted it is Monday 8:01 p.m child I got work in the morning. I said, you know what? Let me just hop on the line real quick. Let me get in front of this camera. Let's talk about this real quick. I really want to make this like all fancy and stuff, but I feel like y'all rock with me whether I do that or not. So fuck it. We're just going to talk about uh, this Jared and Ayana shit. I got a lot of things to say. I got a lot of thoughts. Uh, before I say that, y'all, remember I got a song coming out. It comes out next week. I was going to drop it this week, but baby, I... <laughs> And still got some marketing things to fill out. Baby, when you when you are when you are independent, all the women will independent throw your bitch. This independent shit is whack. <laughs> but I've always been independent. I was never signed to a major. Um, so I really was doing all the work. Um, but yeah, just doing it again, it's like, oh my god, it's a lot of work. But it's gonna come out next Friday. Hold on. Hold on. Jesse Wu's in the motherfucking building. Make some noise for Jesse Wu. Jesse, come up here so the people can see you one time, Jesse. I'm gonna let you go back to dancing and doing your thing. I don't know why I'm so nervous, but I haven't like done this in so long, so I'm so nervous. But um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. comes out next friday so i look forward to you guys um bumping it the video is gonna come out soon also y'all it is may it is haitian heritage month i want to give a special shout out to all my haitians all over the world this is our month you know um i'm i've always been very proud of being haitian i one thing i pride myself on is the fact that from day one, I've always repped for my culture. I never like waited until it was cool to do so. You know, like I've always, always since day one been very, very proud of who I am. And that's always how, I, how I've been in general in life period. I've always been proud of being Haitian. So shout out to all my Zoes. Um, and drop a Haitian flag in my comments. If you're Haitian or if you're if you have Haitians in your life that you love, um, if you're helping us celebrate, um, May 18th is Haitian Flag Day. Um, so it's a really it's a it's a lit month for Haitians all over the globe. So again, happy Haitian heritage to all of my Haitians out there. Sakpa si nula 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 yo All right, y'all. Let's get into Jared and Ayana. I have so many thoughts. So much has happened. Uh, first of all, you know, we have Ayana who has a podcast called Feel in the Blanks. You know, she talks about relationships with one of her friends. And, you know, I think for her 
having this podcast and talking about relationships and healing and doing this for all this time and not being honest about her relationship, I think it just started to take a toll on her. Um, and then watching like another season of Love is Blind, like all these things, I think just emotionally start to take a, a toll on her. And she finally came out and she said, you know what, guys, Jared cheated on me. Is there anything that you feel comfortable to like release now. right now? Mm -hmm. Jared cheated. How did you find out? I found out three days before after the altar. Mm -hmm. I received an email mm -hmm. with very details, with details, <laughs> very specific details. I remember when this happened because mm -hmm. we went out to eat. Remember? Oh. We went to Chicago Oyster House. Oh, yeah. And you dropped that bomb on me when we were literally at dinner. And I was like, yeah. Fuck. I let you read the email too, didn't I? Oh, I read the whole thing. I saw it all. The picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. So it was a lot for me to have to. Immediately, I was like, I want a divorce. I want a divorce. And then my mom was like, Ayana, you're making a decision out of anger. And I realized she was right. Yeah. And I can't, I couldn't do that. It's a marriage. It's a whole marriage. It's a whole It's not marriage. like a relationship where you kind of like, you make, you make decisions like, okay, this is a red flag. I need to get up and go. Like, yes, it's a red flag, but then you also battle with the fact that you made commitment yeah. to stay. And I knew what my gut was telling me not to, and even still I did it. And mm -hmm. so I felt like even still I needed to like, I just had to see it through. Yeah. But it was a lot. It was so much for me to have to still film after that. That's what was the real reason of us breaking up. Remember, they had that whole divorce statement that was very amicable. It was like a joint statement, you know, they, you know, the, the joint statement that most couples do when they're trying to keep things cute. You know what I mean? So to hear her finally come out and say, hey, this is what really happened in my marriage. And he cheated on me, obviously broke the internet because I think they were one of those couples that, uh, even though it started off shaky, we do know that, you know, Ayana was not Jared's first choice. You know, people have always, you know, you know, dragged her for that. I've even had my thoughts about that. So, you know, it started off shaky, but it looked promising as time went by to most people. Not to me, but, you know, I was surprised that they still kept this going, but whatever. Okay, so they stay together, they get married, so seeing them break up was... It was somewhat of a shock. So of course she says he cheated on her uh, on her podcast. Then she has, I think, a live and some of the snippets from the live were on TikTok and she goes into more details. Once she went into more details about the fact that, hey, she had the other girl, the other girl sent her an email. Jared tried to lie at first. So then the girl sent a more detailed email, you know, now, for sure, for sure, like, we know what he did and the extremities that he went to to cheat on this girl. So then following that, you had Jared come out and he had this stupid ass statement on Instagram and his Insta stories saying, you know, I've been taking the high road and whatnot. And I remember seeing that and saying to myself, baby, unless you're going to come out and say that this girl cheated on you first. And even then, I would still have questions about that. But unless you would come out and say that, baby, the only road you need to be taking is the mattress giant. Because I know that bed is still on the floor. Do y'all remember that bed? Le moment que te wè que kabon nan se a te a te ye, fol te ka remake que relasyon se a te a te ye tou. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you go to a grown ass man's house and you see his bed on the floor, please understand your relationship is an on the floor relationship. There is no ascension possible here. This is what this man deems good for him. So what do you think he deems good for you? Mind you, let's go ahead and focus on this right here. This is not even a real drawer. This is not even a real drawer. These are them little plastic thingies you can buy from Amazon. That be like twenty dollars that you could just stack up on on each other. It's like a fake drawer, okay? Do y'all remember Jared's bed? I just know that bed is still on the floor. So baby, if you're not taking the road that leads you to rooms to go, okay? A uh, 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 restoration hardware, 
uh, 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 living spaces. Uh, 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 but what's, a, what's another, what come, Ikea? You need to shut the fuck up, okay? But of course, him being the dumbass that I know he is, I, it's very clear that Jared is a fucking dumbass. Him being the narcissist, him being the delusional, uh, 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 him being the delusional dusty that he is, of course, he hopped on Instagram Live to tell his side of the story. So I want to start there. I want to start with Jared's side of the story. Then I want to jump to a podcast episode that I, I feel has gone under the radar a lot. And I don't know why nobody's brought this to the forefront. But first, let's look at Jared's side that he shared on IG Live. So first of all, Jared gets on IG Live and he actually reads the email that Ayana has been talking about. He ended up inviting me and my friends back to his place, which we later on found out he did not live that alone. We did kiss and there was some touching in private places, but there was no sex. I honestly have gone back and forth about whether or not to mention this at all, but I just feel like it isn't fair, but I just have to clear my conscience and reach out and tell you what your husband is doing. So, that night. Here he goes. So, the show had already came out, you know what I'm saying? We was out partying, me and my friends, celebrating the show, celebrating me and, and everything, like just having a good ass time, telling when we decided to go back to... Now, let me stop there, right? First thing, the show is coming out, and instead of being with your wife, to celebrate with your wife, apparently, uh, I saw Ayana say uh, somewhere else, I think it was on Little Black Book 91, that she did not want to actually watch the show with Jared. Now, she didn't go into detail about that, about why she didn't want to go, about why she didn't want to watch the show with Jared. But as I've listened to different interviews that she's done, I understand why. Here's the thing is you're a couple months into this thing and this man was giving you every sign that he was the biggest mistake. The man was inconsistent. The man was staying out late, coming home when the sun would come up. Wouldn't be consistent with communication. You know, like lying to you consistently, like continuously. She would have to go through this man's phone, like for the truth. So this already to me sounds like Jared was already cheating and she didn't have any proof. That's what it sounds like to me. Let me know if that's what you think. If you're married and your man is staying out till the sun comes up, not once, not twice, not three times, like several times per week. And when you call him, he doesn't answer you. When you text him, he doesn't answer you for hours. What does that sound like? I mean, the bitch is not Superman. <laughs> the motherfucker's not Batman. He not out saving the motherfucking world. Bitch, you can answer a fucking text within a couple minutes. You can call me within a couple minutes. Jared doesn't have a real job. Jared apparently is a bouncer at a club and a promoter on the side. Bitch, you have time. You have time to answer my motherfucking calls, puss ass nigga. You have times. You have time. Okay? So what does that sound like to you? So obviously, being Ayana, and I'm just putting myself in her shoes, if I know that... I basically let you be portrayed a certain way. And mind you, I think this was, um, this was after the season, the, se the season was about to debut. And this is like before they go and they film after the altar. Okay. Um, mind you, you know how you allow this man to be portrayed, but you know who he really is. You're not trying to celebrate that shit. And him being your husband and him knowing that he's full of shit and him knowing that he's been upsetting you, him saying, all right, then cool. Well, I'm going to go out with my friends. It, it's not given. Let's continue. Uh, go back and finish partying and drinking at my house. Um, at the time, me and my ex-wife, we weren't. She was at her place because she didn't want to watch the show together. So um, that's fine. I mean, it is what it is. Um, but these women, they came back. And me being the nice person that I am, you know what I'm saying? I offered them, you know, it's like, yeah, shit, we, we all gonna drink, let's have a good time. I wasn't gonna drink them. Me being the nice person that I am. 
Niggas are delusional. Niggas are delusional. Like, like men are delusional. Men are really fucking delusional. Me being a nice man and I, me being a nice person that I am. You know, we all going back to the same place. What place are y'all going back to? You don't know these women. You're married. Why are these women being invited to your place? You are married. That is cheating. That by, and, and you know, men are so delusional. And they're so good at their delusion. That they will spin it on you and make you... Like, make you feel like you're crazy. Because to him, I can already tell, he's like, well, I mean, we ain't had no sex, so that's not cheating. Sir, what were you inviting them over to your house for? Y'all wasn't about to have Wednesday night prayer meeting. <laughs> what the fuck are you inviting these women to your house for? Y'all not about to have a, a prayer meeting? Y'all not about to pray together? Y'all not about get y'all down in McClurk and going, we fall down, but we get up. It's not that type of party, sir. What are you inviting them over for? First, I was done. I was, I was tired. I was ready to go to sleep. I was done. Now, I've owned up to the fact that I should not have never invited them to my crib in the first place. One, I've apologized time and time again to y'all about that. Um, so that alone, you know what I'm saying, shit was poor decision making on my end. And I understand that. I take accountability for that. Poor decision making on my end. Oh, my God. Poor. That was poor decision making. on. It was cheating, sir. That was cheating. Poor decision making is leaving the toilet seat up. And letting Ayana's small ass fall into the toilet and drown. Because she's small as fuck. Poor decision, me, uh, poor, poor decision making is leaving the dishes in the sink. Poor decision making is forgetting to pay the phone bill on time. This is cheating. Let's 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 just stay focused. Stay focused. This is cheating. Okay. Should have never happened. Um, secondly, everything that was said that happened did not happen. Um, this girl said that we kissed and there was touching in, in private places, but no sex. None of that happened. Like, I didn't touch this woman. I didn't. <laughs> none of that. They got here. We sat down. They, I, I was like, here, here's the bottle. Here's the liquor. All that. You know what I'm saying? And y'all go at it. Y'all have at it. And I went and laid down on my bed. Maybe like five, ten minutes later, I hear, oh, hell no, nah, girl. We got to go. This man got a whole girlfriend here. Uh-uh. Why he invite us here? Blah, blah, blah. And left. And that was that. So, why would the girls be so upset if there was nothing happening between you and at least one of the girls? Why would, why would, why would the girls say, oh my God, he done, he done brought us over here and he has a girlfriend? If y'all didn't kiss or touch or do anything, why was that the reaction? If there was no intent to have sex, let's be real, why was that the reaction? That reaction wouldn't have happened if you had no intent on doing that. And here's the thing too, if you go back to Ayana's live, she said, she got the first email, she told him, hey, you cheat on me? He denied it. So then she asked the girl for details and that's when he had to come clean that the girls did come over. So you're already a liar. You're already a liar. See, this is why we have to stop fucking with niggas that sleep on the floor. These, like these niggas, these niggas with the floor mattresses, this is why we gotta stop fucking with them. They only good for two things, long dick and lies. See, a floor mattress equals long dick and lies. Okay? Long dick plus lies equals this. Okay? That's what it equals. All right? That's the equation for today. Long dick, lies equals floor mattress. Okay? Let's continue. That was that. <laughs> what am I lying about? There's, I have the whole ass email here. <laughs> like, come on now. Is he dumb? But it wasn't just them. It was my homeboys too. Like, 
they was just the only. I ended. I actually had to drive. I ended up driving her car because she was too drunk to drive. Her and her friends. So I was like, "Fuck, shit, we all going back to the same place." Shit, I'll drive. There's no Uber. There's no Lyft. There's no taxis. So not only did you bring these two or, or the one girl, this really drunk girl back to your place. What was your intention for you and your friends? She, this, is a, this is a stranger. She's drunk as fuck, right? You pick her up and you bring her back to your place. What was your intention? What was your intention? To be nice? Get the fuck out of here. But was that poor decision making on my, my end? Absolutely. I apologize for that. And I was a man about that. And I was like, you know what? Like, I understand how this look optics wise. Like, this shouldn't have never happened. I should have never invited them here. You know what I'm saying? So I get it. I understand that. But everything else that transpired after that, that shit did not happen. Liar. I was. Liar. I take accountability for what I did. But, like, everything else that happened, everything after that did not happen. Um. And for this to, to come out now, especially for somebody that I, I really, truly cared about, you know what I'm saying, this, it hurt. Um, because I've, I've always been a, a person, like, I've never been, although my, my life is on public display, I've always kept things private. Like, I've never, social media will only get one side of me, and that's the side that I allow y'all to see. Like, I won't put my business out there, whatever I got going on, like, you rarely see it, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm just a private person, you know, and I just feel like some certain things are doesn't need to be in the public eye. So this is where I have to correct you here. Your relationship started publicly. Your relationship started publicly. And also, you let Ayana fall on the sword repeatedly, publicly for you. Repeatedly. Repeatedly, I'm going to show you guys a clip of her falling on the sword for this man, which is basically lying for him. See, guys like this, when they're used to you lying for them all the time and then you finally stop, this is how they behave. Oh, for this, you know, I, you know, he kind of reminds me of the L.A. Swindler. I have a video on here called the L.A. Swindler. It's about a preacher that used to preach in Huntsville, Alabama, who then moved to L.A. to become an actor with his adoptive daughter mind you he's 38 his adoptive daughter is 22 i'm gonna let y'all figure out the r kelly equation in that um but he goes to la and this is where i met him and it just was so many things about him that just were not adding up he was supposedly successful he told me he was a business owner, that he had this restaurant or whatever. He had a sneaker store. You know, all that stuff was back in Huntsville. So I'm thinking, okay, like I'm just taking him at face value. Mind you, he had a fleet of cars, a fleet of luxury cars. Bell started ringing for me when I went and I spent a weekend with this man and I opened up his fridge and there was nothing in this fridge. Nothing. Mattress on the floor. L.A. Swindler, empty ass fridge. And it was to the point where it would be time to eat or, you know, like I'm noticing that he's not eating. So I'm ordering food and just to be kind, I'm like, do you want, do you want? Yeah, 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 please. You know, let me. He wasn't eating. And then his daughter was in a room and never came out. And I was at his house for like three days. The girl never came out of the room, out of the room, not even like to eat. So I was like, something is wrong. But I was in and out of the house a lot. I had things to do. So it's like I was paying attention, but I wasn't. I just was registering everything. And I remember when I left, or I think either when I left or when I was still there, he was telling me how, oh, you know, he doesn't want to go back to preaching. Uh, but, you know, this church had invited him to come preach, but he didn't want to do it because, you know, he left preaching behind. When he was a preacher, you know, there were so many things that were said about him that wasn't true and he didn't want to go back to that life. He's like, but he really he really needed to do the booking, the church booking, because it was $10,000. And I was like, okay, well, you should do it. And he was like, oh, but I don't really want to do it because, like, it's just not good for my mental. And I was like, well, don't do it. 
He's like, yeah, but I really need that $10,000. And in my head, I'm like, is this motherfucker asking me for $10,000? Like, is he trying to ask me for $10,000? So I remember telling my friend, I was like, friend, something is off with this man. He's not eating. He's kind of asked me for $10,000. My friend called the building where he lived. This man owed the building over $40,000 in rent. I didn't say anything to him. But then I looked up on my IG and I saw that he came to Atlanta for that preacher booking that he didn't want to do. And so when I saw that, I didn't say this on the previous video, but when I saw that, he had mentioned a girl to me in passing. And I don't think he realized that I kept a note of that. I remember everything. And so when I saw that he came here and he didn't hit me up, I said, let me call her. I called her. He was like, yeah. Well, actually, I had never talked to her in, in, ever. But I called her and I said, I hit her up on IG and I said, hey, I need to talk to you. And we got on the phone and I said, I want to talk to you about someone. I, I, this is really awkward. Before I could even finish the sentence, she's like, who, pastor such and such? I was like, yeah. She's like, what you want to know? Yeah, he's a swindler. Yes. He's been stealing money from me for years. The real reason why he's not at the church in Huntsville anymore is because he stole the church's money, was sleeping with church members for money. Men and women. It was bad. It was bad. And so when I made the video, again, I didn't have concrete proof. When I made that video, I got so many DMs. Like, there's so many things I never shared. There was this one girl who literally was crying in my DMs, telling her how this man had had literally, like, used and abused her for years. There was, there was another church member who told me she, he baptized her one day and fucked her the next day. And then gave her the H word. Gave her, gave her the same thing Jackie supposedly had in, in, in Mexico, child. Like, it was bad. And it was so bad. It was so bad. People that he owed money to was on his ass. And, you know, I don't understand how people like that still survive and still be walking around alive like that. Because fast forward now, now he back preaching now. And I don't understand that because men be having so much smoke for women, but men never, never have smoke for men like who owe them money, who like owe them a fade. They never really have that same smoke for men. Men are pussies nowadays. But anyway, I mentioned this story. It's called L.A. Swindler. It's on my channel. Please watch it. It's very entertaining and it's a true story. And uh, I know that this man is back preaching, is going around. Oh, my God. He went around telling people that. There was one girl who caught that he and I were dating. He told the girl that I was, he was my acting coach. Like, it just was ridiculous. Like, it was fucking ridiculous. This man was an acting coach. He was a, he was a stylist. He told me he styled this one actor, not knowing that I knew how to get in contact with that actor because I knew um, the director on the film. Like, I, I was able to poke holes in everything this motherfucker ever said to me. And I'm so happy that I wasn't one of his victims. But I got reached out to so, reached out to by men, women, from Huntsville, Atlanta, to L.A. Like, it was ridiculous. Even in New York. It was fucking ridiculous. But anyway, why I bring this up is because when he got caught, so many people, so many other people were pulling out receipts on his ass. And he went online and gave this half-ass apology with no accountability. His whole thing was, you know, I mean, my only thing is, you know, I, I trust people who I shouldn't trust. It just was ridiculous. Instead of coming out and saying, you know what? I have used God to steal from men and women. I have used God and my penis to steal from men and women, you know, in the, in the body of Christ. Instead of just being honest, he wasn't. And that's why I hope, I know he, I know he gonna be on the first flight to hell. I just, oh Lord, I hope I see him burn, Lord Jesus. But anyway, seeing this live from Jared just gave me that energy. It's always these men who really have nothing, who have nothing, who somehow finagle their ways into our lives and then do their nothingness and then try to flip the script. So, um, I said I would show a video of Ayana falling on the sword for Jared. You know, we saw her do it in the, after the altar. She still protected him because she found out that he cheated right before they filmed after the altar. Um, but I want to continue the live because he did say something else that I, that really fucking irked my nerves. So this right here is Jared's big aha moment, right? This is the moment that he was taking the high road on. I really want y'all to pay attention to this. Eric's um, 
she was out with some of the cats, some of the female castmates. Uh, that I was at work. I was working at the doing security that night, and she was out having a good old time. Like, nothing, nothing out of the blue. Like she was, she was getting drunk. Fine, that's fine. Go ahead, have fun. So. Um, <laughs> he just think he about to spill. He about to spill tea, bitch. When I get off work, I go pick her up. I'm calling her, no answer. I'm looking at her location, it's telling me she's at this one location. Um, so I go inside this location. I'm looking for her. Can I find her? I call her again. No answer. <laughs> I'm not throwing anybody under the bus. I'm just speaking my truth. <laughs> Speak your truth, bitch. But, uh, Hurry up. I did find her. It's not a lie. <laughs> Ask her, she would tell you. When I did find her, she was holding hands with another guy walking down the stairs. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> what is this? What is it? Um, she was obviously, she was, she was drunk. We went home. We got into it argument when we got home because I'm like what what is this why is who is this guy why are you holding this guy's hand this side the third I'm like you know I'm not about to have this conversation you're drunk I'm sober the very next day we're having this conversation and I'm hit with the I blacked out I don't remember does that excuse you for whatever actions happened in between this time that you do oh this man think he's spilling tea know. Nobody's trying to figure out a story. This is actually why. Go ask her. <laughs> Go ask her. She'll tell you. <laughs> 100% she'll tell you. So, remember, this is a man who drove a drunk stranger all the way to his apartment where his wife lived with him. Okay? I want y'all to keep this in mind. This is a man who drove a drunk stranger all the way to his home to fuck okay so he goes and he picks up his wife who was hanging out with other castmates the castmates are nowhere to be found his wife is obviously drunk and she's coming down the stairs holding a man's hand Make some noise if you've ever been in this situation, ladies. <laughs> this nigga is dumb. This is a dumb, this, like, this man is, is dumb. So, you're comparing your drunk wife needing assistance to go down some stairs. To you picking up a drunk female stranger and taking her back home, kissing her and fondling her with the intent to go all the way on top of your flow mattress that you share with your wife. You're, you're comparing this. You're, like you're, you're really, you're equating the two. This is how stupid you are. You're like two plus two equals four. Okay. Right now, you're trying to make two plus two equal eight. And we're not buying it. We are not stupid. When I went to school, I did not major in mathematics. But bitch, I know how to make two plus two equal four. Not two plus two equaling eight. That's what you're trying to do right now. The continents don't meet. The continents don't meet. <laughs> this motherfucker's delusional. And he really believes what he's saying. Um... Because that was some, that was that was something that I had to deal with very early on. Mm. That I had to deal with very early on. But you know what? I was just like, you know what? I'm still going, still going to work work through this shit, figure this out, and and try to try to get over this. Y'all, funny you talking about doing tit for tat. I don't know. It was, he was not helping her downstairs. So what was he doing? No, not. not. <laughs> so what was he doing? This is somebody that was. With them, he met her out when they was when they was out drinking or whatever. And I know this because one of my homeboys was out. This is somebody that was with them. He met her out when they was when they was out drinking or whatever. 
And I know this because one of my homeboys was all was drinking with them all with all them too. So his homeboys went out with Ayana and the other female castmates. All just separated, and she still stayed outside. But then they all separated, right? So Ayana's drunk, but his homeboys and the girls that she was out with all left her alone. What does that sound like, y'all? So in that IG live, after he gives his side of Ayana supposedly cheating by holding the man's hand, um, he goes on to talk about how, you know, he was with this girl for 16 months and he really cared about her and he did all he could to make it work. So I want to play a clip for you guys from this podcast that is about five or four months old. It's a podcast called Marriage or Mirage. And then I want to come back and talk about it. When was it the point where you felt like this is definitely just not going to work anymore? Like, let me know from both of you perspectives, because y'all are going to have different ideas of that. So when was it for you? Because like every time me and me get in an argument, I feel like, oh my God, we ain't going to be married forever. You know, but then the next day we kiss and make up and I'm like, ah, he's my soulmate. I love him so much. You know what I mean? So maybe I'm topsy-turvy, you know, but let me know for you, what was that point that you just was like, this is not, we're not going to bounce back from this and I can't get over this. Either you one of y'all can go first. I'm letting Jared go first. Oh, no, ladies first. First, last time. Go ahead. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, uh, it's okay. For me, for me, there was a specific incident that happened. I can't talk about it, but there was a specific incident that happened, and I was just like, I'm not dealing with this. <laughs> I'm not dealing with this shit. Uh, and I, I, I sat on it for like a week and it was still bothering me. And I was like, yeah, this, if it's still bothering me, I know it's an issue because for the most part, I try to like digest things and try to move on quickly just for the sake of like the relationship. I don't like to fester on things for the most part, unless it's a repeated pattern. And then I'm like, bro, like nothing's like, nothing's changing. Nothing's growing or progressing. Um, but yeah, there was that, that that specific incident. I was like, yeah, I can't do it, bro. I can't, I can't keep pushing. Jared, do you know what that specific incident is? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you feel comfortable letting us know? Because Ayana obviously doesn't want to put you out there right now, right? So, could you, however you want to, yeah, you can plead the fifth if you want, brother. I'm right here for yeah, you. Babe. Yeah, babe. Come on, I'm trying to get the tea a little yeah. bit. No, I mean, you like both <laughs> Listen, listen, it's a, it's a very. It's but it wasn't good. cheating. Nah. Okay. That nah, told me everything I needed to know. Look at him. Look at his ass. He couldn't even look straight into the camera and say no for real, for real. Just a fucking lie. A goddamn lie. Yeah. It's, I understand that things are new. You know what I mean? Everything right now is a new, it's fresh. It's very sensitive. And plus, y'all in a good space, it seems like. <laughs> strong, a strong Long Island, not even a weak one. Y'all in, uh, in a great place. So well, I don't want anything to disrupt that. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say, I do feel like even when marriages are good or bad, therapy is probably a great thing, right? And Absolutely. when you're doing this experiment, love is blind, I feel like they need it need to be mandatory to have therapists right after y'all see each other, be on a camera, meet and stay in the room because this shit is not normal. It's just that's not. a lot. <laughs> I don't know at all. Like that's a lot to throw somebody in, and then to think that we actually thought we knew each other. That's <laughs> right, dope. right. And they, just, and they, and they just dip. They just leave. It's like, right. I'll see y'all right. eight right. months. Season's over. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Starts, it starts. Are we ready to record again? Yeah, right. and, then, and then season three drop. So yeah, yeah, yeah. watching that and it's, it's triggered all that stuff. So, <laughs> what, do you guys feel like if there was therapy involved in the show, do you guys feel like it would have given y'all a better shot? Absolutely, absolutely. Because we didn't, I we didn't start therapy until I was given an ultimatum. And <laughs> had we started therapy a lot earlier, then some of the, the issues and things that were the, 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 
the some of the issues that we were experiencing early on that were constant patterns and repeats, um, those could have been probably could have been mitigated a lot sooner. Um, and I think married, married at first sight, like they, they have kind yeah. of like the, the, I guess you, I guess you can kind of call them like therapists or whatever with the, the three yeah. experts and they're there the entire time. Like, I think if we would have had something like that, this shit would have been a lot I wouldn't say it would have been a lot smoother, but it, it definitely would have helped for real, especially with like the longevity of the relationship and truly figuring out if if this is what we want and if this is the person that we, we feel like is the best option for us or is the best one for us. Therapy was the ultimatum? Yes, it was. And what did it come we were, too late? Huh? Did therapy come too late? Should you have done therapy I like think you so. said? Yeah, you think it came too late? I think I think we should have started therapy way earlier than what we did, but Jared needed time to think about it. Mm. So, so all of our brothers and sisters watching, they say black men don't like therapy. You know what I'm saying? I don't. Therapy came late. It's just the trying to implement everything that you're learning in therapy. Like it's not gonna, it's not gonna happen like this. Like you, those things. Like my my communication. I don't have the best communication. That is something that I'm still working on to this day. You know, and <laughs> like my my therapist, like <laughs> he was getting different ways <laughs> to like. Yo, as I'm watching this, I'm actually getting more angry. Like I'm actually getting pissed. <laughs> I wasn't angry before, but now I'm getting pissed because it's like, why did you go on the show? Why did you go on the show if you don't have basic communication skills and if you don't know how to stay home? What was the fucking point? What was the point besides racking up some fame so that you can continue to pass around your dusty bum ass mattress on the floor dick to all the ladies of Chicago? What else would be the point? Because obviously you didn't sign up for marriage. You just signed up to play in everybody's faces. What was the point? And Jared is the perfect gaslighter because remember, in one breath he says, oh, I would have, we should have had therapy from the beginning. But you have Ayana saying, well, I tried for months and months and months to get us to do therapy. You didn't want to do therapy until I gave you an ultimatum. He's a gaslighter. That's gaslighting right there. Let's talk about that clip that I just played. First of all, shout out to Charmaine and Neek. I actually was staying with them when I was in LA over the weekend. Make sure that you follow them. You guys know them from Black Ink, Chicago. Um, I love them. They're like my family. And um, so yeah, make sure that you show them some love. Now, several things happen in that clip, right? First things first, first of all, you have Ayana falling on the sword again because you have Charmaine saying, hey, did, was it cheating? What led to you guys' demise? Was it cheating? Was it cheating? No, it wasn't cheating. Jared, no, it wasn't cheating. You cheated. You cheated. And you have Ayana kind of saying it but not saying it. It was cheating, okay? Second thing that happens, right? Let's talk about therapy. Cause see, remember in his live, Jared said he did all he could. He, he, you know, he was with this girl for 16 months. He gave us all right. But you literally admit to going to therapy. Once you got an ultimatum, that ultimatum definitely came after you cheated. And, and keep in mind, y'all, we have receipts for this time. There's no telling how many times this man cheated on this girl. I am willing to bet my lace front wigs. The whole collection of Woo's Wiggery that this man was cheating on this girl from the get-go. From the get-go. Especially when the show came out, oh, bitch, he was a star. He was a fucking star. He went from being bouncer to the nigga at the club. Now, now all of a sudden, he was a party promoter. And the, he wanted to live that celebrity life, okay? So that man was poking his ding -ling in every hole he could find instead of going down to Mattress Giants and getting himself a bed frame and a hair boy, okay? But remember, he did everything he could. You didn't go to therapy until you received the ultimatum. But then you see him switch up. Oh, but you know, if the process did give us therapy, we would have we had a better chance. Would it? Because then in the same breath, you say, oh, but it's hard to implement I, it, I, I can't implement everything the therapist is telling me to do at, you know, all at once. Sir, the therapist is telling you to stay your black ass home and be faithful to your wife, number one, and to communicate to your wife. Talk to your wife. What is it that you're not, what, what, what's not, what's not clicking? 
What's not clicking? What's not clicking? This man is a liar. He's a liar. He is a bona fide liar. So I'm glad I waited till today to um, do this because Ayana went on another podcast today and it, it was, it's with, it's with uh, it's a podcast with Natalie and Deepthi. They were both on her season of Love is Blind. I want to play y'all a couple clips from this podcast. Viewers only see you connect with Jared. Like they don't yeah. see your other connections, other connections. Yeah. but who were your other connections? Oh my God. I actually, people love, oh, you know, Jared, oh. she's second choice. <laughs> um, I actually also had a second choice. Um, I just figured mine out, what, a day before Jared did? Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to say his name. What if he's like, I don't want that attention. Whatever. I don't Anyways, Hasibi. 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 <laughs> so Ayana revealed that she actually had another choice, which was a second choice technically for her because she picked, she decided not to go with this man the day before she decided to go with Jared. His name was Hasib. Ayana's, so Ayana's second choice was Hasib. Now, Ayana, I have to ask you a couple questions, sis, because Hasib was a lawyer, okay? Now, in the podcast, she goes on to say that, yeah, that was her other connection and that she didn't pick him because of religious reasons. Now, to my Middle Eastern brothers and sisters, to my Islamic brothers and sisters, to my Indian brothers and sisters, please don't take this the wrong way. I am assuming the man is Muslim or Islamic, you know, like uh, uh, that would be the religion that he's of. And she said that for religious reasons, she didn't want to, she felt that it would be really, really hard to blend, you know, their two beliefs together. I'm so sorry, girl. I'm sorry, y'all. Is it me or Hasib and Ayana would have made a cute couple? They would have made a cute couple. That would have been a beautiful couple. Beautiful couple. Remember, I told y'all my Brian story, my Brian, my college story where I really regret not making myself available to this man because he was literally the best man I've ever dated. And my reasoning for that was because he was Muslim and I was Christian. I'm sorry. Like, I, I, ladies, we got, we got to, we got to, we got to sometimes step out, step out a little bit. And you know what? You know, Islam and Christianity mirrors each other to me. There are a lot of similarities and people who are of Islamic faith tend to be very, very, very organized, very serious, very purposeful people. People that people who have purpose, people who know what they're trying to do, people who really take their relationship with Allah serious are people that you can go somewhere far with. That's been my experience in dating or friendship. So I, I'm, I'm letting y'all know, if I ever get me a little Hasid, if I ever get a chance at a Hasid, baby girl, I will be on camera, rap, head rap on. I'm sorry, head rap on, okay? Quoting the Quran, okay? I'm letting y'all know right now. Doing my black Ramadan, what's good? Nah, sis, I can't eat that. It's Black Ramadan. I'm sorry. I will be on my Black Ramadan shit. I'm just letting y'all know that right now. I'm just letting y'all know that right now. If I get a if I get a second chance, baby, if I get a second chance, baby, it's over for y'all niggas. If I get a second chance, it's over for y'all. Okay, I will be down to the mosque okay i will be down to the masjid i'm, I'm, just, I'm just letting y'all niggas know i'm just letting y'all niggas know okay i'm sorry i would have been down to the parts with a head wrap on saying assalamu alaikum okay assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum okay i would have been doing all that i would have been praying to the north five to five to six times a day baby you ain't gotta ask me twice because the man was a lawyer he was an attorney He was an attorney. How do you pick a project manager over an attorney? Mind you, I'm saying project manager because now I have questions. Girl, did you ask Jared what his job was? Because Jared ain't had no job. Jared did not have no job. What, what was he, what project was he managing? 
Did you ask Jared those questions before you got with him? What project was he managing? That apartment looked like the projects. Maybe he was managing that. That apartment looked like the projects. Do y'all remember Jared's apartment? Let's take a look at Jared's apartment. See, this is where this is where Ayana fucked up to me. A lot of y'all keep, keep saying to this day, oh, she was a second choice. You was a second choice. You, girl, this is where you fucked up at. Because let's have a real conversation. A lot of you who are in relationships right now are that person's second choice. Let's keep it a buck. Let's keep it a buck. We're going to have a real conversation this evening. A lot of y'all who are, are who are in relationships right now are that person's second choice. You're not first choice. Is that necessarily a bad thing? Based on your perception, it could be bad or good. Because I can tell you right now, a lot of times my first choices was trash. <laughs> okay? My first choices were trash. All right? So that could either be a good or a bad thing. And then we have to factor in the fact that they were on a show and they had to make decisions. The whole premise of the experiment was to make a decision and make it quickly. Okay. So we can give her grace there. But what I cannot give Ayana grace on is when she walked into this man's bedroom and saw this mattress on the floor. Ayana, I cannot stand by you, sis. I can't. I can't. And not only was his mattress on the floor, that's not even a real mattress. That is a blow-up mattress. That is a blow-up mattress. And then to the right, to the right of the mattress, you have a fake drawer, a uh, 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 a nightstand thingy. Do, do y'all see that? Where she went to go... Y'all know y'all could get that stuff on Amazon, right? The like the, the cotton drawers that you could get for like 20 bucks. This is a grown ass man. This is a grown ass man. Who's looking for blind love where he should be looking for love is a mattress. When love should be only at Mattress Giant. That's the only place Jerry should have been finding love. Only at Mattress Giant. That's the only place he should have been finding love. Not on Love is Blind. Jerry is out here trying to find love in a hopeless place when he should be finding love at Ikea. This is where you fucked up at, Ayana. And I'm going to tell you where else you fucked up at. When Jared took you to meet his parents, do y'all remember the fact that he didn't even tell his parents he had a fiance? He just rolled up on his parents with a fiance. No warning or nothing, Jesus. Just raw. Just a raw ass fiance. Just raw. No condom or nothing, Jesus. Just raw. A raw ass fiance. No lube or nothing. Just a raw ass fiance. Didn't even tell his parents, right? And then when his parents are like, you know, what, what, what made you, what attracted you to her? Oh, her resilience. This man didn't say, you know, she had a good heart. She had a great personality. She made me laugh. I enjoyed speaking to her. And then when I laid my eyes on her, she was gorgeous. Most beautiful girl I've ever seen. It's her tenderness, her softness. Personality. She's smart. He said none of those things. Well, he said, she resilient. She strong. She a strong black women's. She a strong black women's. Let me tell you something we are tired of during black women's. I'm not one of your little friends. Do you have McDonald's money black women's month? We're tired of being your fucking donkeys. You know how like people like to just load shit on a donkey and just ride it? We're tired of that shit. Don't nobody want to be your strong ass black woman. And ladies, if that's what a man has to say about you, leave that man alone. I don't have much men advice, but I'm going to tell you this. If the most notable thing a man can talk about when it comes to you is your strength, that man is looking to add to your load. If the most notable thing a man has to say about you is your strength, how strong you are, that man is trying to put more dumbbells on your weight. Oh, she's strong. She can handle them. Oh, she's strong. 
She could take some more. Oh, she ain't have her parents growing up? She could take me being absent. She could take me not answering her calls. She could take me staying out all night. That's literally what Jared did. She could take it. You can take it. You strong. You are strong black women. You can take it. That's where you fucked up at. You got to listen. A man who does not have a bed frame and a headboard is very unserious. Very unserious. What project was he managing, Ayana? He should have been managing that mattress that was on the floor. A lot. And again, I was just going based off of his words. But again, mm -hmm. I almost said no on the wedding day. And I texted him. I texted my producer. I said, I'm saying no, I can't do this. Because he was out till four o'clock in the morning that day. <gasps> You're oh, right. Wow. And the thing is, is like, I don't know much about at the time. I didn't know much about the club scene. Mm -hmm. And I, because I don't like clubs. They're so overstimulating. And yeah. I don't understand. And you were new to Chicago and too, I was, right? I Literally, I had just moved to Chicago. Mm -hmm. Literally just moved to Chicago. Um, so I didn't know about the club scene. I didn't know what a, a club promoter job entails. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was texting. I, I, I was texting. I was like, I, I have to say no. Like, I can't deal with this. I'm like, you're saying this isn't you, but I'm seeing otherwise. And then uh, after that, he just showed up randomly at my hotel that morning um, at like 5 a.m. in the morning. And he was convincing me like, please, please say, I promise you this isn't me. Like, this isn't typical behaviors because of COVID. I've missed my friends. Like, I haven't been going out. And I understood that because also because of COVID, I was so heavily introverted. And I'm not that introverted. You guys see yeah. me. Yeah. I'm not that introverted. But because it was straight after COVID or during mm -hmm. COVID, I was like, oh, I just don't like everything is so overstimulating. I just want to be in the house. Um, and so I understood to a degree and I believed him. And then I said, yes. I have to ask you, Ayana. On the farm, to be on Love is Blind, this man said he was a project manager. Now, he's staying up till 4 a.m. because he's a club promoter. Sis, the continents ain't meeting. The continents don't meet. The continents don't meet. That's where you fucked up at. This man showed you immediately who he was immediately who he was okay it was probably about two to three months in when i had the proper that amount soon. of time to actually get to know him and that's when i realized like i made a mistake because i remember he was he was already doing the going out thing and it kept going and then i would text him and he'd just ignore me but then he, he he'd respond like every two hours with like a picture no look it's fun i'm just out with the guys um and i'm just like oh, this isn't appropriate behavior and he'd come home when the sun was up and i'm mm -hmm. like dude what's what is what is this? And that's when I realized, like, oh man, I made a mistake. But at that point, I'm already married, and I took vows, mm -hmm. and I took that very seriously. And I was like, I have a role to play. This is my husband. I have to at least try to, you know, make it work and put my all into it. Yeah, I think that's what I was going to ask you: is if you knew two, three months in that you were regretting it already, what made you wait so long? Yeah, you know, before you. I just wanted to make sure I gave him the appropriate amount of time because that was his biggest complaint. You're not giving me enough time. You're not giving mm -hmm. me enough time. And so I said, okay, well, let's set ourselves up for success. And so only about five to six months in, I was like, we have to do therapy. Like we, and he was resistant to that. And I was like, no, I don't want to give you an ultimatum, but I need someone who will grow with me and I need you to want to want this. And he's like, okay, mm -hmm. fine, let's do it. And then that's when we started therapy. It was like December of that month. And we had only been married for like five months at that point. Mm -hmm. um, but then we started therapy and therapy was so helpful for me personally because she was questioning things about my mindset and about my perspective and how I was reacting in it because I did have a lot of insecurity. Granted, it was through his behavior, but I didn't like that I couldn't maintain integrity and and, and not reacting in a way because I felt like the only way that I could get the truth sometime was like going through his phone. And I don't, that's not me. That's really not me. I'm not that person. I don't like, that's an invasion of privacy, but mm -hmm. he would just... He would just either tell half truths or lie or just like not say things at all. Um, mm. And it just, and, and therapy is so helpful for me. And she was like, Ayana, where's this coming from? Or, and she did, because I therapize myself. You, you hear me, I, I ramble all the time. <laughs> and I'm constantly like therapizing. Um, but all she had to do was ask a question. And immediately I'd, I'd question myself. 
and and it was so challenging but it was so good i loved it now we hear ayana basically saying what i said at the top of this video this man was already cheating she doesn't say it but it's like the man was already not speaking to you not communicating with you not answering your phone calls not texting you back for hours he was already cheating the man was in the streets the man was in the streets and in the podcast she goes on to explain you know that her and the girls both say that the reason why there's this thing that comes over all of them when you do this experiment right it's kind of like you versus production and you versus like the world like you know it's us against the world and you have something to prove right and i can kind of understand that you know i remember doing a uh, one season of a reality show and i remember learning how mostly everything was fake from even like the first season a lot of things were set up a lot of things were fake fake relationships like there was a certain relationship that was supposed to make it on that season now it's 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 doing it's happening now and so i remember that i remember people really going out of their ways to do things to stay on television and you know relationships were one of those things and also i i feel like i can mirror this to love is blind because you know, Ayana said something at the top of this podcast. She said that she saw Lauren and Cameron and that's what really made her want to do Love is Blind. A lot of people are looking at Love a lot of people are looking at Love is Blind and saying, you know what, Lauren and Cameron, Lauren and Cameron, right? And maybe now they'll see like uh, you know, the Browns, Brett and Tiffany, and say, you know, I want that, right? But especially when it comes to Lauren and Cameron, again, I've said this before, the look that Lauren and Cameron got the press, the partnerships, the money that they were able to make from finding each other on that platform, it's not going to ever happen again. I'm telling y'all. It's not going... Like, it would have to be a couple that outdoes that. It's not going to happen again. And a lot of y'all are going on these shows and... You're sticking it out with these people who you know are not good choices. And I think partially because maybe like you want to satisfy production, but also like you're looking at the bigger picture of when you make it out and what's the look going to be. And, you know, it just it's not going to give that. It's not going to give that. It's not going to give that. OK, Jared is a piece of shit. Jared is a piece of shit. Scum. First of all, you're a scumbag for lying to the production of Love is Blind and telling them you're a project manager, which you're not. First of all, and second of all, I need Love is Blind to start researching people's jobs. Because the girls said something and it's really true. The second season was a shitty selection for the jobs, especially like for the guys. It was, it, it was really shitty. It was a shitty selection. Y'all need to do background checks on these jobs and make sure that these people are what they say they are. Jared was not a project manager. Jared was in the projects, managing his bed on the floor. That's it. He was not no project manager. Jared is a wannabe club promoter slash star. He really thought like he was gonna cash in on this and become like the king of Chicago. Baby, the T is out. You broke and you not, you not doing it like that. If you had a good mind, if you had a good sound mind, you would have treated this girl right and you would have been able to build something off of that. But you're a piece of shit. So it doesn't surprise me that you weren't able to do that. Then for you to have the nerve to get online, oh, I'm going to speak my piece. You should have just shut the fuck up. You need to shut the fuck up. You need to shut the fuck up and buy yourself a, frame, a bed frame and a mattress. That's what you need to do. Don't come online no more. Don't do no more IG lives. We don't care and we don't believe you. Okay. You know, what's really fucked up is that men like Jared, which sort of like, just like the LA swindler too, men like Jared know that there's like, there's so many eyes on you and you still have the audacity to do these things. You still have the audacity, like it's the audacity, you know, millions of people are watching you. And you have the audacity to bring a random person to your house. What if this girl, like, you know, uh, um, Ayana said something that was so true on this podcast too. She said, you know, the girl could have made a TikTok. The girl could have went online looking for clout. She didn't do any of that. 
But there's no telling what other girls have on you and what the fallout from this could be. Because I am convinced you were out in these streets. And then you're doing this thing and you don't even care. First of all, these niggas be doing this and don't even be wearing no condoms. You bringing back whatever to your wife. Like you're, like you're just a piece of shit. Ladies, stay away from niggas who have floor mattress beds. Now listen, I'm going to tell you. Like I said before, a floor mattress equals long digging lies. Don't ask me how I know. In my previous life, you know, I don't live that life no more. Don't, don't ask me no questions. <laughs> I'm not here to discuss my previous life, okay? I'm saved now, all right? But floor mattresses, blow up floor mattresses, does not equate seriousness. Them continents don't meet, okay? Them continents don't meet. Let me know what you think about this whole Ayana and Jared situation. Uh, I saw a clip of Ayana somewhere talking about Marshall. Season four of Love is Blind came out. The, the second release just came out. And people are growing to know these people more. Mm -hmm. um, they're growing, whatever. They're growing to know the people more. And people have decided to try to play matchmaker. Between the Love is Blind universe. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Stop, mm -hmm. Kayla. <laughs> so irritating, bro. <laughs> um, anyways, people are trying to hook up um, me and Marshall. Let me give my, my thoughts. Actually, I don't know if I should give my thoughts because let me just share that someone told me to basically shut up. So that's, <laughs> I forgot all about that. What do you mean that so I got to... Kayla, oh my God, Kayla. Just, all right, just spit it out. <laughs> okay, now that that's over, um, <laughs> I have something to say. So I kind of like this really? idea. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think that, I think that I can see it. It has a little spice to it, Not you know. spice? <laughs> What is this a chai latte? No, I'm just saying, like the matchup. It's a it's a little spicy, but I think like in the right way. Like what, who? Where's the spice? I think that I think that y'all both are a little spicy. Oh, okay. In the same type of way, and yeah. that's why it's really funny. Because when I saw him, when I saw Marshall, do when when what's his name? What's the oh, annoying when dude? Josh? When he came up to oh, me, oh yeah. And I said, what he the said, fuck? What the fuck? I said, this <laughs> that is was Ayana. Ayana. <laughs> as soon as I, I said, wow, that's me. That is me to a T. I'd be like, what the fuck was that? But he's also very sweet. And I think that he's also very articulate of his emotions. Mm -hmm. he he's very aware. Mm -hmm. um, he was maybe a little too articulate with... What do you guys think about Marshall and Ayana? Do you think that they would make a cute couple? I actually think they would. I think they would make a beautiful couple. You know what I would like to see? I know that Netflix has the perfect match. I would like to see Marshall and Ayana go in the perfect match. I would like to see it. What y'all think? I would like to see it. Um, let me know if you want me to do a video on the perfect match too. Like who are some people that I would like to see on the perfect match? Speaking of the perfect match, child. So <laughs> have y'all seen Shane lately? What the fuck is going on? Is it crack? See, my daddy used to be a crackhead. I know a crackhead when I see one. I, mean, I want whatever like, since oh. smoke it. <laughs> At this point, you see how you tired. It's, got, it's, 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 it's that bad of a rehearsal program. I mean, you, like, what else can you do? Singly? Yeah, you tell yourself to relax as well, okay? It's easy when you're sitting in front of your camera and get tech then. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty bad. And all jokes aside, I think that uh, Shane lost his mother last year. And I believe he lost his father before he got on love is blind so you know it looks like he's hitting a rough patch baby you gotta stay off that powder though stay off that powder i hope that his friends from the cast and friends that he's had before i hope that they're reaching out to him and whatever family members that he has i hope they're reaching out to him but also shane has a special message for you natalie shane like the connection shane and shane i had in the pods i had obviously no awareness of i have some solid real estate in this girl's head like move on Two years. Two years now. Move on. Shane had enough time to get off that damn baby powder to let Natalie know, bitch, keep my name out your motherfucking mouth. Oh, my God. And he 
anyway y'all let me know what y'all think about this video drop down in the comments like share subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video